Hey guys, I want to welcome you to episode 5 of Martin's Rhythm Method. Uh, it's Martin from the band Voyager Project again. Uh, I want to apologise that this is a bit late. Um, last week I was tracking the drum parts for the new Voyager Project recording. Had a great time, managed to get 13 songs recorded, which will all be appearing on the new album coming out later this year. Um, but as a result of that, I did quite a lot of um, I caused quite a lot of pain to my wrists, so I was unable to play at the end of last week. Thankfully, by sort of Saturday night, Sunday, uh, it was all working again fine. Okay, um, so for, for this week, uh, there will be another episode on Thursday, uh, so episode 6 will be on time. Um, but for episode 5, I'm going to go back to the first episode I did when I asked people to um, give me suggestions of styles of music they wanted to cover or things they wanted to look at um, and one of my subscribers called Meal22 said that he would like to look at reggae guitar uh, he said reggae and ska uh, so I'm going to look at reggae today I've got to confess I don't know a great deal about ska music I don't know a great deal about reggae but I've done a bit of research um, so that's what we're going to look at today just some basic reggae um, it's completely different to some of the stuff we've been looking at. It's a bit more related to last week when we were looking at you know, higher up, higher string chords. Reggae uses the guitar much more as a rhythmic instrument in terms of it's, it's almost a percussion instrument, so it's quite a sharp cutting sound. Um, so I'm on, uh, I'm on Beastie. I'm on the bridge pickup only, uh, which is a Damasio breed, and I've got the coil tap in for a. A single coil sound. Okay, so what we're going to use reggae, um, from what I've seen, uh, is is relatively simple harmonically. It's about the interplay with the rhythm. It's a lot about the bass and the drums and the vocals and the feel, uh, the whole vibe going on. Um, so what we're looking at today is just two two chords, two basic bar chords, um, an F minor. Uh, which is an A-shaped bar chord at the 8th fret uh, and then an E-flat major chord, so just going down 2 frets an A-shaped bar chord so the big thing about reggae is is the beat it, the guitar is used usually for off beats so whereas in a lot of the stuff we've been looking at um, a lot of rock and metal music, it's all about the big down on the 1 that tends to be left to the bass in reggae so everything is on the upbeat so if you're counting one two three four one two three four and imagine that keep keeping going in your head then if you think that as the down stroke and just pluck the up strokes so one two three four Okay, I mean that hopefully is fairly straightforward to you, um, but it's you can take obviously take it further than that because if you were just playing two chords all the way through a song, and only playing up strokes on the off beats, it wouldn't be very interesting at all. So you can by muting the strings, which you do just by lifting your fingers away, to get that kind of slightly scratchy sound. You can almost it's almost like funk. You can bring out some rhythms. So, if we keep on that one, two, three, four, two, three, four. So you can hear that still the focus is on the off beats. But um, we're, we're adding a bit of more of a scratch, so it's more of a percussive sound on, on the beat. And you can take those chords and add notes to them. Um, one thing that I like to do if, I've, if it was those particular chords that I was using would be to take the F minor chord and just before I'm about to change to the E flat, bring my little finger down and play the E flat on the top E string so I'm playing a 7th chord, uh, an F minor 7th chord, 
which then leads nicely onto the E flat. So that would be. Hopefully you can hear how that just adds a little bit of interest. And there's all sorts of things you can do. Uh, because we're using clean sounds and higher frequency sounds, you can get away with playing major sevenths, major minor sevenths, sixths, all of these interesting chords that you may have seen in a chord book and thought, I'm never going to use them in rock. And you probably won't because with distortion sounds, they sound a bit too muddy. Okay, but with this clean sound, um, Okay, it's not a jazzy sound, but you can get away with playing jazzy chords. So even even something as really weird sounding as a major minor seven, which is kind of yeah, suspense in a horror movie, um, you can maybe throw that in every now every once in a while. So if I play that um, instead of my standard F minor chord before going to the E flat, and then what I'll do is I'll play. E flat major seven, so the very very jazzy sounding chords, but with this clean sound, uh, you get away with um, it, it. Just adds a little, little bit of interest. Now you wouldn't want to do that all the time because that would sound weird. But if you want to just build a little bit of tension, maybe at the end of the verse as you're going into a chorus, that's one way of doing it. As ever when practicing all of these um, all of these patterns, if you've got some drum loops, there's lots of places you can download drum loops for free off the internet, uh, or you've got a metronome or a drum machine, practice along with that because the timing is really important. It is with any rhythm guitar stuff, but way when you're concentrating on upbeats particularly, you need to um, make sure that your timing is really tight because it's the upbeat that says whether the pace stays on track or whether it races away or whether it gets dragged back and if the rest of the band are trying to you know, build it up and make it run faster and you're playing slightly behind the beat then it's not going to sound good. Okay I hope that's been of interest to you. Um, in episode 6 later this week we're going to be looking at something different, we're going to be looking at moving tones within chords uh, to create a melodic part while still playing rhythm, uh, which is great for accompanying a vocal line or a solo or whatever. Um, it's an essential skill, I think, uh, in most styles of music, um, from jazz to country to worship to metal. Um, all of these styles of music use this. Okay, so I want to thank those of you who've subscribed to my channel. Um, it's 20 of you now. Um, keep publicising, keep telling your friends about it. Uh, we're getting slowly closer to the 100 subscribers um, for the competition. Uh, who knows, there may even be a Voyager Project album finished by then that I can give as the competition prize. Okay, take care and I'll see you next time.